Well, hello and welcome to the Bowling University studios from the International Bowling Campus in Arlington, Texas. This is The Profit Break. If you're joining us for the first time, we're glad you're here. Give us 15 minutes and you'll be well on your way to improving yourself and your profitability. On today's show, I want to take a moment and say congratulations to our first time leaders who are watching, or should I say condolences. Don't worry if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed and this leadership thing isn't quite what you thought it would be. Now keep in mind that I'm not going to make you an expert leader in the next few minutes, but we're going to touch on a few things to help you on this leadership journey. So let's kind of jump right in. As we talk about leadership and this leadership journey, we've got to think about things in the sense of you may have manager in your title and that's perfectly fine. You can be a manager, but there's a difference between being a manager and a leader. And we want to talk about leadership today because in the end, people don't like being managed. They want to be led. And so when we think about it, you can probably picture this back to when you've had a boss that you call the boss and that person wasn't the leader. They were always kind of barking orders, telling you what to do, but didn't really jump in there and move the needle forward. So in this case, as a leader, you've got to kind of jump in there and everybody's going to rally around you and get behind you. And so we're going to kind of work on some of those things and give you some tips to kind of uh, move forward with those. One of the things that I want to emphasize today is that we manage systems and we lead people. Now, if you don't get anything else out of today, I want you to get that. We manage systems and we lead people. Those systems are put in place. People come and go. But when people just don't like to be managed, think about um, those things when you're doing stuff and people are telling you to do things. You want to be led to do those things. You don't want to be managed and micromanaged. And we'll talk about that in another episode. But let's unpack this whole leadership thing. I know you're probably going, hey, I'm the, I'm the snack bar manager. I'm the arcade manager. Quite honestly, any position where there's two or more people gathered together, there has to be a leader and there can be a leader. You may not have that leadership uh, title, but there will be a leader. And this whole leadership thing is really a journey. It's not a destination. There's no uh, perfect road to take. There's no one way of doing it. It's something that you're going to constantly be developing over time. And you may make some wrong turns and then you'll be able to course correct and, and move forward from there. But understand this. You don't just become a leader overnight. You don't just master leadership. This is something that's going to be something that is ongoing that you'll continue to learn over time. So hang in there with me and think about this. You've been under some people and you've worked for organizations. And if you want to avoid getting the same results, then you've got to stop doing the same thing. So even if you're a little ways down the road in your leadership journey, You've got to understand this whole leadership process. And if you can start doing things a little differently, then you can start changing the dynamic and start shaping stuff with your team because it's your responsibility as that person in that leadership role to kind of pass on these traits to those that are in your charge. And for you that, those of you watching that may be seasoned leaders, you may have been doing this for decades, that is great. Sometimes we've got to understand that we've got to be able to package up our leadership skills and be able to give it to that next generation that's moving into those management roles, those supervisory roles. We can't just throw them out there. So we've got to figure out some different ways of doing that. And that's all of our responsibilities. So let's jump right in, first one, tip that I'm going to give you as far as leadership is that leadership is not a title. Think about this. When you're put in that position that you may have been a frontline counter worker and now you've moved into a shift manager, just because you have that shift manager title doesn't mean that you can boss people around and bark orders at them. Think about when you were a young kid and your parents told you to do something and you didn't really like it and you questioned it. And they said, you're going to do it because I said so or, or, or else. And how did that make you feel? So think about that with your team. So when we're talking about leadership, we've got to understand that there's a lot of stuff that's involved. And it's really about influencing and guiding your team members and motivating them towards that common goal. 
and being able to move forward. Because we want to have we want to have an environment where everybody feels like they're a part of it, that they're moving forward and working towards a common goal. And we can do this by leading by example. Leading by example doesn't mean go to the front desk, push that counter person out of the way and say, watch this. This is how you ring up a person that gets the family package. Or this is how you make a cheeseburger. We're going to teach them. We're not just going to push them out of the way. We're going to help them and coach them and guide them along the way. And that's how you lead by example. We want to be that role model. So you want to think about those behaviors and traits that you like and that you embrace and be able to share those and use those to be that leader that's leading by example. One of the big things that you want to focus on in leadership, and it's going to be your most valuable asset, is trust. Because without trust, your team is not going to rally around behind you. So you've got to figure out, as that first time manager in that leadership role, that doesn't mean that you're going to make everybody happy, and it doesn't mean that you're going to be everybody's friend. But you've got to develop trust. And so we're going to touch on a few things to help you with developing that trust. And one of the biggest things is communication. We've got to have open and productive communication. And that's the easiest way to build trust. We've all had a boss that they may sit in the office and none of us want to go knock on the door or interrupt them from their nap. And that's the kind of stuff that you want to try to avoid and, and focus on in this journey is to understand that somebody sitting in the office that doesn't want to be interrupted is not breeding an open communication that's going to be productive. And then also, too, we've all had that supervisor or manager that may come across the concourse and they're always barking orders, pointing out things that we're doing wrong. And in this case, we've got to think about, OK, I don't want to be that person and consciously don't always point out the negative. Be able to point out what they are doing right. Be able to help them, coach them. Because if we're only coming through the concourse and barking what they're doing wrong, then every time they come through, they're going to be like, man, here he comes again. What did I do wrong this time? And that's not going to be build a, uh, a lot of trust amongst your team. So we've got to think about this whole idea of trust. And so often, uh, we want to people to earn our trust. But in that leadership role, we've got to understand that we've got to give trust and then empower the team member that, hey, you have the trust, you have my backing to do your job, to help the guest, to do whatever you need to. And then if they break that trust, now we have those discussions. But if you find yourself where your team's coming to you all the time and asking, should I do this? How should I handle this? What should I do next? Then they obviously don't have a feeling of trust because they're worried about, well, if I do this and it's wrong, then that person's going to get upset at me. So we've got to understand that whole idea of trust, which leads us into being able to increase our emotional intelligence. And you're probably going, what in the world does this mean? So let's just break it down simple. God gave us two ears and one mouth. And like my mother always said, you got to listen twice as much as you speak. And for a lot of us, that's tough because a lot of times we're listening to reply or to respond and we're not really truly listening. And when we truly listen, this is a life skill that goes beyond just your work life. This goes into your personal life as well. And so guys out there, if you have a spouse, girlfriend, um, sometimes they just need to talk. And there's a great video, it's not about the nail. Uh, go look it up on YouTube. But listening is a life skill. Sometimes people just need us to listen. They don't need a response or they're not trying to get us to solve the problem. They just want us to listen and be able to bounce an idea off of us so that way they can move forward. So we've got to focus on that whole idea of just really lending an ear, being able to listen, and understanding how important listening is in our role as a leader. And then when we get into that whole idea and we're starting to get into listening, sometimes we're going to listen to a lot of complaints, and they may be from team members. And I'm not saying that you have to agree with them, but you got to empathize. And you've got to understand that 
where they're coming from, what's their perspective, what is that feeling that they have. And that way, we're not agreeing with their perception, we're not agreeing with the way they're feeling. We're just listening and being able to empathize so that way we understand where they're coming from. And it could be just a total miscommunication. But if we don't listen and we don't empathize and we're just worried about defending and responding, we're really struggling with building that trust with our team. And when it comes to that trust, like I mentioned earlier, we've got to think about empowerment and being able to empower our team members. So often as that leader or manager, you are going down doing things or being asked to do things that our frontline team members, they can handle and most of our shift supervisors and our rest of our team can handle. And they can make those decisions, even if it's a guest that may not be happy. Have some standards in place and empower your team to make decisions. Because if they're always coming to you to resolve the issue, you're not growing and developing them. And it's taken a lot of time away from those things that you can be doing. And as the leader, and as a, especially a first time leader, you probably have a lot on your plate. And you probably got into this role because you're a doer and you're able to do things, and that's great. But in this role as a leader, as a manager of a team, you've gotta be able to ask for help. And this can be a big weakness for a lot of us that get promoted up through the ranks because we were great at our job, great at doing things. We've got to learn to ask for help because as a leader, you've got to work with and through others in order to accomplish things and move the team forward. You can't get it all done yourself and you're going to feel stressed and overwhelmed and, and just not even know where to begin when you're in that leadership role and you're trying to do things the way you've always done. Now we've got to understand that we can work through others and we, we, we can get it all done. We're just not going to do it all ourselves and we're gonna get the help and we're gonna ask for the help. So don't feel overwhelmed. Don't think that asking for help is a sign of weakness. It's really a sign of strength. Also ask for help from those in other leadership positions so that way you can learn and be a mentor and be mentored so that way you can start to develop your leadership skills. One thing that we've gotta remember as leaders is that yeah, while we may know a lot and everything, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Let me say that again. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And this leadership thing is truly, is truly a journey. And we've got to understand that the learning never stops. We've got to keep developing ourselves in this leadership journey. And leadership is something that takes time. It'll take, take turns, it'll take twists. But as long as you study, you put forth the effort, you can become a great leader. And as we wrap up, I just wanna say that you gotta continue this, this journey and you gotta to continue to look for things uh, to help you with leadership because there's so many different leadership styles out there. Just remember that you're not alone and now you have several things that you can work on in this journey. Leadership is not easy, but it is simple if you remember that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. If you wanna learn more about leadership or have questions about leadership, I'd encourage you to attend one of our management schools here at the campus. Plus, you can reach us at any time at education at bpaa.com. As we wrap up another edition of The Profit Break, remember when your focus is on growing people, people will grow your business. This episode, as well as all of our previous Profit Break episodes are available 24 seven for you and your team at bowlinguniversity.net. Plus, new episodes are available every month, so mark your calendar, watch your email, and join us on face Facebook to hear about those episodes. Until then, I'm Gerald Morrow. Do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. We'll see you next time.